What's going on you guys, Clinger? Welcome back to the channel, Code Commerce. And in this video, I'm gonna show you real quick how we can build a dashboard layout in Next.js using Tailwind CSS for our styling. So this is the example I have for you right here. So as you can see on the left side of the screen, we have a side nav bar. I just gave it a 01 for just an example so you can identify it. Then we have a header up here, which I labeled header start on the left side, header end on the right side. Then we have a column one here, column one start, column one end, and then column two start and column two end. Now this is mobile responsive. So I set the breakpoint to 768 pixels. So if we grow this, you'll see once we pass this 768 pixel breakpoint, we're now gonna have two columns and you can stretch this as far as you want and it will maintain its aspect ratio, okay? The header and the side nav are gonna remain the same, but the column one and the column two will flex and stretch. And then once we shrink down below our 768 breakpoint, you can see how they stack. So if you wanna see how to build this Next.js dashboard layout, then let's go ahead and get started. So here I am in VS Code. I'm just gonna press the Control Backtick button to open up our terminal here. And what I'm gonna do is create our Next.js application. MPX create dash next dash app. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a period there so I install it in our current directory. We're not really gonna be using TypeScript, but that's okay. You can go ahead and say yes. Yes, linter, yes. Tailwind CSS, yes. Source directory, no. App router, yes. And the import alias, you can say no. Okay, so we just created our Next.js application. I'm gonna go and type npm run dev to start up our development server. So I already have my demo running on 3000. So what it's telling me is to go to port 3001 and that's where the demo is gonna be running. Yours is gonna be on port 3000. All right, so this is it. This is our Next.js application, our boilerplate starting code. So what we're gonna do is go inside this app folder here. I'm gonna go and zoom in just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do, this page file here, okay? Let's shrink this down a little bit. So this page file here, this is what you see on the screen, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just delete everything in here. I'm gonna leave that main tag. There we go, let's delete that. And let's just delete all of this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and just change this over to a div. Doesn't really matter, but we'll just stick with the div for now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give this a class name of flex. And let's just open this up here. And what I wanna do next is actually create our side nav bar. Let's do that first. So what I'm gonna do inside of this app directory here, I'm gonna create a new file. And what I'm gonna say is components. And what this is gonna, is gonna do is create a folder slash side navbar.jsx. So when I create that, you can see that it created a components folder and then a side navbar.jsx file. RAFCE is gonna generate a functional component. Now what I'm gonna do in here, I'm gonna say 01 just so we can label our side navbar. And let's go back into our file here into our page.tsx. And what we wanna do is just import our side navbar. So we'll just say side navbar, just like that. And let's go ahead and import it. And you can just cop or just type over this image since we're not using the image component. So what I'm gonna say is import, we can call this side nav bar from going to our, whoops, components side nav bar. So now we should see an 01 on there and it looks kind of ugly because we haven't given it any styling yet, but that's okay. So let's go back into our side nav bar. And what I'm gonna say, give this a class name, let's say flex none. I'm gonna give it a width of 20. I'm gonna say BG gray 200, then H screen, which is saying screen height 100 viewport heights. So I was going to save this. So there you have it. You can see our side nav bar, just slight uh, color differential there. So now we have our nav bar. What I wanna do next is create our header. So let's open this back up. And we're gonna create a new component in here. I'm gonna call this header.jsx.tsx, doesn't really matter, R-A-F-C-E. And then what I'm gonna say in here, I'm gonna just give this two P tags. We'll say header start. I'm gonna copy this down and I'll say header end here on this one. And let's go ahead and import this here. And we're, the way we're gonna lay this out, okay? So we already have a flex here and we're gonna create a div here. And inside here, we can have our header doesn't look like it's letting me auto import it, so that's okay. We'll just copy that down. We'll say header. So we import our header. If we go ahead and save, you can see our header start and header end there. So what I wanna say in here, let's give this a class name. What I'm gonna say is flex dash one, anything above a medium breakpoint, just 768 pixels. We'll just display flex. We're gonna give it an H screen and then we want this to be position relative. So next, let's go back into 
our header. And now in our header, let's go ahead and give this a background. We give this class name, BG red 200. There we go. And I'll say position this absolute. I'm gonna give it a height of 20, a width of full, which is 100%. I want to say flex and then justify between that way we can see the header start and the header end so there you can see that now if we flex this or we open it up you can see we're using flexbox and it spans the entire width of the screen all right so next let's go ahead and create our first column so again let's go back into our components folder i'm going to create a new column here or a new file here i'm going to call it left column.jsx okay RAFCE is going to generate our functional component once more. Then what I'm going to say in here, I'm going to have my, we'll say column one start. Let's copy this down. This will be our column two start. And let's go ahead and we're going to import this in here. So with our header here, then we'll also have left column. Sometimes VS Code does not want to auto import for you. And that's okay. We'll just type it in manually. There we have it. All right, so let's go ahead and save. Now we're probably not gonna be able to see anything yet because it's kind of hidden underneath this uh, nav bar, the side nav bar and the top nav bar. So let's go into our left column. And what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say margin top 20, which is the size of our header here. So now you can see we just start right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say flex justify between now you don't have to say this I'm just doing this so you can see the start and end of this uh, component anything above medium I'm gonna give this a width of we can open up our brackets here and add in custom values so in here you can add pixels you can add rim in this case I'm gonna add percentages so 65 percent I'm gonna give this a BG gray 300 and then if you want we go ahead and save this so you can see that is our column here now um you don't really have to do anything else for the sake of this video so you can see uh, that it, it stacks up i'm going to say minimum height and then i'm just going to open up my curly brackets so i can give a custom value of 45 percent so if you can save you can see that takes up the top part of the screen now if we open this up it just lives on the left side of the screen and this is our breakpoint at 768 pixels and guys, in case you're wondering where I got the 768 pixels, that is the standard here for medium. So if I hover this, this is a Tailwind CSS IntelliSense plugin. So you can actually hover on the Tailwind and it gives you the CSS property. So as you can see, medium here is a min width at 768 pixels. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and finally just create our right column in here. So under our components folder, again, we'll say right column.jsx. RAFCE is going to just going to generate our functional component. Let's go back in here. Whoops. We'll say right column, call them just like that. And we're going to have to just import this here. It's fine. We'll copy that down. Be the right column. All right. So let's go ahead and save that. And there you have it. You see our right column here. So let's go ahead and give it just a few, just a little bit of class names here. So real quick, I'm going to say column to start. We'll copy this down, say column to end. That way we can see the start and end of everything. So in here, what I'm going to say is class name, uh, say anything. So instead of saying margin top, right? So what I'm going to say here is anything above the medium breakpoint. I'm going to say margin top 20 because we don't want to give it if we gave it a margin top 20 as you can see right here it's going to shove it down and then when we open up to our past our medium breakpoint it looks fine but what we want to do is actually give this a medium breakpoint there we go now as you can see we don't get that margin top until we pass our 768 breakpoint there so next what we're going to do we'll say flex I'm just gonna say justify again, justify between. That way you can see the start and the finish here. And now anything above, we're gonna use our medium breakpoint once more. Anything above the medium breakpoint, we're gonna give it a width of 35%. plus 35 and 65 that we use for the left column totaling 100. And then let's just give this a BG gray 400 so we can see it. Let's go ahead and save. 
So now you can see our full column here. So, and again, if we want to give this a minimum height, we can do that. We'll say minimum height, um, we'll just say 45%, something like that. Now, if we open this up, if we pass our medium breakpoint, you'll see now our columns are flexed. And there you have it. This is how you can create a responsive dashboard layout in Next.js. Of course, you can um, add upon this, you can change it, you can change the widths, you can change the columns, uh, you can shift around the header, the nav bar, and change it how you see fit. But I just wanted to give a quick example on how to create a dashboard layout in Next.js using Tailwind CSS. So I hope you kind of thought it was cool or got some value out of it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you smashed the like button. Thanks for watching. And you guys, I do have a full build coming out soon with a full dashboard in Next.js using Trimmer for some uh, layout components. And I'm going to show you how to host that thing live. So stay tuned. I'm going to re be releasing that here in the next week. So thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the next one.